Hello my friends, John LaRuffa here with another Unbiased Unboxing. And in this episode we're going to take a look at Great Western Trail 2nd Edition. Let's go ahead and see what this newest edition of this game has to offer us. Okay, and as usual folks, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel as it really, really helps me out. So when I look at the new box art here, um, it looks a little bit different. Obviously the whole game has kind of been redone with different, different components and such. So that's fine. The back shows a bit of the gameplay, which is good. And they've got this little side thing kind of showing what's new. So, okay, I'm fine with all that. I did originally have the first version of this, but that game did not have a solo mode. And so I eventually ended up selling it. But then when this one came out with a solo, I found that I uh, wanted to reacquire it, which is not something I usually do. But I did like the original game, just without solo. It didn't get to the, uh, didn't get to the table very often. All right, so we've got this little Plan B book here. Gateway to fun, all sorts of just promos. That's funny that they're showing you there'll be extra ones for different things later on down, but who knows. Anyway, I'm fine with this. And that was the last page. All right. <clears throat> here is our second edition rule book here. So it's as large as the box as you kind of expect with this type of game. You can see all the tiles are illustrated there. And kind of like the first edition, if I remember it, you know, it's uh, kind of a beefy rule set. The game itself is, I'd say, probably medium to medium heavyweight. Um, lots to consider. Lots of stuff you have to learn in order to play it. So it is a little bit of a heavy lift to get it started, but that's okay. I think it's well worth it. I, again, I did like the original game. Just never could get it to the table, so ultimately ended up selling it. All right, so you have a lot to go through here. And it's about 18, 19 pages. And then these, this variant here with the different cow, that is different in this game as well. Then you have the solo rules. So our solo rules look like they come on a uh, four-page situation. So we got the setup for the solo player here. Looks like it's got a special board. Um, and then you've got some of the components you put with it. Talks about the gameplay, the movement, his action, and then another example of his action. So not really a, um, not really a, a kind of like a cheat sheet at the end, but it just shows you, and there is three different difficulty levels too, which is cool. And they say it's even possible to increase it even more if you want to. Okay, then we have our building appendix here. Which shows the neutral buildings, plus all of the private A and B buildings here. And on the back, those auxiliary actions. All right. Now getting into the opponents, we have definitely different art going on here. Different looking tiles. Um, you got the bandits. You get the businessmen over here, so to speak. I'm not exactly sure what their official name is. Some more bandits, businessmen. So it looks like they replaced the Native American tiles with... Those weren't the bandits, I guess. But it looks like they've kind of discontinued the Native American artwork there. And they've made these other tiles. I'm sure they're the same. I don't know if there's much of a difference... It's been a while since I've looked at the first edition, but there we go with go those components. Yeah, definitely replaced all of the Native Americans with the other other kind of thing, which I'm not sure how historical that is, but you know what? Historically speaking, the other game was kind of backwards too. You weren't taking cows, and you still aren't. You know, well, at least they have Chicago right now in New York, so that's better. I mean, honestly, it's better because... Historically speaking, you're going to bring cows, not to Santa Fe, you're going to take them inwards towards these larger cities, which they'll be, you know, butchered and shipped. So I do think that thematically speaking, that makes a lot more sense. 
than the original one, which is kind of going in the opposite direction. But that doesn't matter. So looking at the game board, it kind of has a little bit more of a flowery look than I remember the original one, uh, which is just fine. It looks, this side looks a little bit richer. That's okay. So ultimately, it looks just fine to me as far as that. And on the back, looks like we have a Great Western Trail kind of picture there. Okay. Now, looking at the components, we have the dual layered game boards, which hopefully won't be warping on me. <laughs> but dual layer boards love to warp, as we all know. But they do look nice. I like the quality there. And then, here is the solo board. So that's going to be important for me. Now, I know online a lot of people have been yelling about the insert being too small for cards, and I can already tell you it's obvious that yes, right here, just, just to see it, the cards themselves don't even fit inside the insert sleeved, much less, or unsleeved and wrapped, much less sleeved. So I do agree that is really unfortunate and pretty chintzy because it doesn't look like there's any spot in the box for them to really sit besides. So we'll see what ends up happening. Maybe I can figure out how to sleeve them and put them under here or something or put some of them under the bottom, but that's just too bad. I'll probably just end up tossing the insert and going with the game as is without it. So I do feel like that was a mistake there and, and really a disappointing one in this day and age because it's not like we don't people are ignorant of what the community does. Most people are going to sleeve their cards and even those that don't aren't going to be satisfied with cards that poke up over the edge and start falling all over the place. So there's probably some reason they had to do it, but again, missed opportunity. Okay, so we'll take a look at the cards themselves now. All right. Okay, they are smooth textured. And they are also fairly thick. So if you don't want to sleeve them, you'll probably be okay. They are pretty thick. They don't seem flimsy, so I do like that. They've changed the, um, the artwork here a little bit from the original one, which is just fine. I do remember that you had the Black Angus and the Longhorn. I don't remember a Shorthorn or not. So you got the different cows. All right, you get the idea. So they're not bad. Artwork is looking fine to me. I don't have any issues with that. And I could totally see why people would be bummed about this situation right here. And then we have another deck of cards here. Taking a look at this one. I'm guessing that you're gonna see the solo mode components in here. All right, and there they are. I'm almost sure that's the solo because it's got numbered cards and icons and such, so it looks like that's what's gonna drive the actions, which is good. All right, so we got those. That's a 15 deck there. Then we have, most likely it's the uh, bonus cards here can remember from the original game. I don't really remember from the original game, to be honest. I, those have to be the most cards. I think it's... I can't remember the specifics, but I do remember you either get the five points, you lose the two for not being able to do it. So you got that. And then you've got the variant cows here, which I think must grow up in age. I think that's the, the spiel here, that they start younger, but then they get older. Etc. Yeah, so that's got to be what. And then you got these big, really expensive cars and a couple more short, short orders. So there you go. That's what we're looking at for components there for the cars. Then with regards to the uh, wooden components, it's kind of interesting, I guess. So you have the wooden people, and then you could choose your color hat. I guess. I mean, that's okay. I don't really care. Um, 
they give you four different, I, I guess I don't understand this. Uh, you know, why not just make them the card people? That looks a little gimmicky to me, but whatever. I mean, maybe some people like that, that they get different shades of cowboy and they can change their hat. I guess. That's fine. All right, and then you have the player color discs. Okay, so that's about the size of it, plus a score pad with plenty of score pads on them, but no backing, which I always thought was silly, but that's okay. I, there's a lot here. That's a lot of games. And that's about the size of it. So hopefully you enjoyed this unboxing. And of course, I forgot to show you these little bags, which I should have. Those are where the one, two, and threes will go, which I actually think is a good thing. I remember having to stack those and try to shuffle them. That's good that they have the bags for the tiles as they come out. So that is good. All right, for real this time, I'm done. Thank you very much for watching. Hope whatever you do in the future that you enjoy, uh, you know, whatever game you play. All right, everybody, take it easy.